Teguk refers to the source of everything in the universe and the universal law in which everything continuously goes through cycles of creation and destruction. Pumse Teguk symbolizes the root principle of universal philosophy and is constructed by applying the truth inherent in Teguk's yin and yang principles. Teguk Iljang stands for gun of the eight trigrams and symbolizes the sky which embodies the concept of birth and beginnings and the root of all things. Pumse Teguk Ilja is the first thing you learn when you begin your Taekwondo training. It is designed for the exertion of only a little force, even beginners not used to these moves will be able to master it. Teguk Iljang also includes methods on how to complete movements and to change direction by stepping or turning around the Pumse progress line. We will now take a look at the Pumse of Teguk Iljang. Teguk Iljang consists of nine key moves, namely Kibon Jumbi Jase, Aremaki, Jirigi, Anmaki, Uryomaki, Apchagi, Naranhisoki, Apsogi, and Apkubi. These are the basics to the nine key moves of Teguk Iljang. We will now take a closer look at each of the key moves of Teguk Iljang. Gibon Jumbi Jase begins with Moasogi, where you can stand and move your left foot about a foot's length to your left. Breathe in. Open your fists and raise them from the lower abdomen up to the solar plexus. Breathe out. Then lower your fists back to the lower abdomen. Your face torso, and lower body should be balanced along the center line, and your weight should be placed evenly on both feet. Both elbows should be bent like the internal angles of a hexagram, and your fists should be placed apart about a fist's length. Retain 30% of your breath in the lower abdomen once the preparatory move is complete, and be careful not to raise or tense your shoulders. Aremaki is a technique used to block an opponent's attack towards the lower body with your outer wrist. The blocking arm's elbow should be straightened in a way that positions your fist above your knees about two fists length, and the wrist on the supporting arm should be straightened so that the back of your hand faces down and the wrist touches above the waist. The torso and arm should spin simultaneously and the blocking arm's elbow should not move in a straight line, jirugi. Jirugi is a technique used to attack an opponent's torso by thrusting with the fist. The thrusting arm should be straightened, and your fist should form a straight line with the target's philtrum, solar plexus, lower abdomen, etc. The wrist of your supporting arm should be straightened so that the back of your hand faces down and the wrist touches above the waist. The thrusting arm should move straight forward, slightly brushing the waist. Your elbow should not open outwards, and the supporting arm should be pulled back, slightly brushing your waist as well. The supporting arm should not be pulled back excessively, pulling the shoulder along with it. The spin of the thrusting wrist should complete once your fist makes contact with the target. It is important to keep a straight line when punching a target with your fist. Anmaki is a technique used to defend from an opponent's outside attack using the outer wrist. The outer wrist should be level with the solar plexus, and the location of your fist should coincide with the central line. When initiating the move, the hand of your supporting arm should be slightly straightened at the level of the solar plexus, 
and the hand of the defending arm should protect inwardly. The beginning position is about a fist's length above the shoulder. The elbow of your defending arm should defend by pulling towards the torso, and the elbow of the supporting arm should be pulled slightly, brushing your waist at the same time. Oryomaki is a technique used to protect from an opponent's attack towards the face by raising your outer wrist. Cross your arms in front of your solar plexus and protect from an opponent's attack by raising them upwards. The fist on the defending arm should be above the elbow. The arm should be tilted with a space about the size of a fist between the back of the wrist and the forehead. Be careful not to raise your arm excessively, leaving space between the head and arms when seen from the front. Uptuggy is a technique used to kick towards a front target in a straight line. The kick should be made with your leg bent so that the kicking leg starts on top of the knee of your supporting leg. The forward kicking leg should be bent in a way where your front sole touches the ground first, and your breathing and moves should complete when your rear sole touches the ground. Train this technique using coordination of the upper and lower body. Naranhisogi consists of keeping your feet parallel so that the back of the foot blades face each other, straightening your knees and stand naturally as if stopping after walking. The center of your body should be placed in between your feet, the chest relaxed. The distance between your feet for apsogi is about one step. The center of your body should be placed between your feet and your body should stand straight. The back of the foot blade on the front foot and the inner part of the heel on the hind foot should be on the same line, and the sole of the hind foot should face outwards with a tilt of around 30 degrees. Apgubi is a standing posture where the knee on the front leg is bent and the two legs are spread apart front to back. The distance between the front and hind foot should be about one and a half steps, and the space between the two feet should be about the length of a fist. The knee and foot of the front leg should face forward, and the sole of the hind foot should face outwards with a tilt of around 30 degrees. The knee of your front leg should not bend excessively, nor should it be sticking out in front of the tip of the foot. Your hind leg should straighten in a straight line. These are the basics to the nine key moves of Teguk Iljang. We will now look at the nine moves in succession, connecting each move. The key moves of Teguk Iljang first part consist of Wen aremaki, orun jirugi, orun aremaki, wen jirugi, wen aremaki, and orun jirugi. Shift your weight to the sole of your right foot. Move your left foot lightly, brushing the ground so the sole of the left foot touches the ground before the other. Your breathing should be identical to that of maki the movement your rear sole touches the ground, completing the move. Nediki should be performed softly, naturally with two knees. Backward doradiki from orun apsogi. Orun jirugi should be performed with your weight on the sole of the left foot. The heel of the right foot should not be above the ground when performing wen apkubi neryomaki. Cautions for Teguk Iljang. First part. Taking a closer look. When performing Jirugi, be careful not to pull back the shoulder of the supporting arm. When performing Nedikki, be careful not to let the rear sole touch the ground first. When performing Aremaki, be careful not to bend your elbows excessively and naturally connect to Jirugi. We will now practice the moves of Teguk Iljang, first part in succession slowly while watching the video. Teguk Iljang, second part consists of Wen Anmaki, Orun Jirugi. Orun Anmaki, Wen Jirugi, 
오른 아래막이 and 왼 지르기 When connecting to 오른 앞서기 and 왼 안막이 from the previous move, push on the ground with your right foot and shift your weight to the left foot. Then perform 왼 안막이 by pulling your right foot. Then, when performing the wen apsogi and oren jirugi, set your feet and release the tension in the defending arm and connect to jirugi. It is important to maintain equal tension on both arms when performing jirugi and refrain from exerting unnecessary force. Then, place weight on the sole of the right foot, turn and set, move your left arm facing the direction of progress, and perform the preparatory anmaki move with your right arm. Complete anmaki the moment the rear sole of the left foot touches the ground. Cautions for teguk iljang, second part, taking a closer look. When performing oren apsogi, wen anmaki, do not put your feet together and perform wen apsogi and wen anmaki. Your elbow should not move away from the body when performing anmaki. This is in order to properly transfer the energy from the spinning of the torso to the arm. We will now practice the moves of Teguk Iljang, second part in succession slowly while watching the video. The key moves of Teguk Iljang, third part, consist of when orgulmaki, oren apchagi, and oren jirigi, oren orgulmaki, when apchagi, and when jirigi. When performing orgulmaki, protect the face by crossing your defending arm from under your supporting arm. The fist on the defending arm should be raised first, then move your hand slightly up to face level and defend by snapping the elbow up. Your other fist should be pulled to the waist and aligned with the center line of the wrist protecting the face. The space between the back of the wrist of the defending arm and forehead should be about the size of a fist, and the elbow above the fist should be tilted downwards. Cautions for Teguk Iljang, third part, taking a closer look. Be careful not to let the elbow of the defending arm fall back. We will now practice the moves of Teguk Iljang, third part in succession slowly while watching the video. The key moves of Teguk Iljang, fourth part, consist of Wen Aremaki and Oren Jirugi. Push on the ground following the previous move. Place weight on the right foot. Turn and set your left foot 90 degrees inwardly. Perform the Wen Apgubi and Wen Aramaki. Set your foot for Apgubi Sogi and shout with Oren Jirugi simultaneously. <laughs> Place weight on the right foot. Turn and set. Borrow. Cautions for Teguk Ilja. Fourth part. Taking a closer look. When setting your foot from Apgubi Sogi to the next Apgubi Sogi, be careful not to let your height change. Also, be careful not to perform multiple moves when turning to Borrow. We will now practice the moves of Teguk Iljang, fourth part in succession, slowly, while watching the video. Ah! This concludes training for Teguk Iljang. We will take another look at all the moves and master Pumse.
we have looked at the key moves of Taeguk Iljong and provided thorough explanations for each move and things to watch out for. As a new initiate in the art of Taekwondo, we urge you to maintain your passion until the end, continuously and repeatedly honing your skills. We'll see you again in the Taeguk Ijang video. Thanks for watching.